Hedwig, you're out, Hedwig. I'm not allowed to use magic outside of school. Harry tells Hedwig he can't use magic to open the cage to let him out, but there's a key in the lock. Is turning a key magic? Hang on. How do you know my friends haven't been writing to me? How does a house elf like Dobby get out of the house so often to steal letters from Harry's friends? Has he been wandering around outside snatching owls out of the air? And why did he even bring these letters with him in the first place if he wanted to keep Harry from Hogwarts? Dobby, please stop! The company downstairs could hear Dobby when he hit his head against the drawers earlier, but can't hear anything as Harry and Dobby run down the stairs. There's no way in hell Harry hears this flying car. The only way he could have been woken up just in time to see it is, you guessed it, magic. Ron, Fred, George. Thanks for the roll call, Harry. Yep, Ron, Fred, and George are home, but so are a host of other Weasleys, so where are they on this GPS system? Dad works in the Ministry of Magic. Harry and Ron had a whole year to get to know each other and Ron's dad's job never came up? And who are you? Seriously? One of the most famous wizards in all the land, and Arthur Weasley, who works with the government, hasn't even so much as seen a picture of Harry? This lot won't come cheap, Mum. Is there any reason this family full of magical wizards still has to be poor? Like, can they not use a textbook creating spell or something? I mean, we've got self-cleaning pots and pans here, people. What could this family possibly need money for? There's even a spell to fix the lens in your eyeglasses, for fuck's sake. Diagonally! Wouldn't Harry have to be, like... American to mispronounce Diagon Alley the way he does. It helps advance the plot to have him end up somewhere else, sure, but it's completely stupid that he would mispronounce it this way. Harry just happens to get accidentally sent to a place where he can overhear the Malfoys being evil. No, please. Harry! Maybe they should have called this Harry Potter and the Chamber of Plot Conveniences. This run through the brick is cute and all, but are we honestly supposed to believe that no muggles ever see this and freak the fuck out calling 999 to report the redheaded kids who just completely evaporated in broad daylight? Like, for instance, these muggles here who clearly see Harry and Ron's failed attempt at going through the brick. What do you do think you're doing? What, haven't you ever seen a bunch of kids run through brick before? The invisibility booster must be faulty! Yeah, because magic invisibility can break down just like windshield wipers or air conditioning. This car doesn't get dented or crushed at all. Now, you can tell me it's a magical car and that it can't get damaged, but then I'll tell you that the fucking car only crashed because it was damaged somehow. Oh, now the tree can dent the car. I know they had a brief adventure with the tree, but why are they so much later in arriving than the students who were on the train? Which they followed here, and presumably arrived at the same time. Does everybody in this movie carry around with them and expose incriminating items in this story? In this shot, there are panels open everywhere in this greenhouse, including a huge beanstalk or something coming out of this one. But then when the camera actually goes down into the greenhouse, none of the panels are open. Mandrake or Mandragora? No! So wait, one mandrake scream causes the whole class to put their hands over their ears while wearing earmuffs, but 30 mandrakes all screaming at once brings no discomfort whatsoever. Ron? Is that your arm? Man, this kid has the best eyesight and unnecessary expositional abilities of any wizard in Hogwarts. How the f*** did he recognize Ron's owl from this distance? And where the f*** is this owl coming from, anyway? I don't quite understand. If you're Lockhart, and you're a well-known author who has women throwing themselves at you, and you're this vain, why would you take a low-paying job as a teacher at Hogwarts? Gilderoy Lockhart Inception Painting. A little quiz. Doesn't Hogwarts set a curriculum? Like, how can professors come in and give quizzes about themselves to the students without that getting out and the professor getting reprimanded? Can you possibly imagine a better way to serve detention than by helping me to answer my fan mail? I wonder if this nearly three-hour movie will have time to explain how vain Lockhart is. Great Scott, no wonder. Look at the time. We've been here nearly four hours. Okay, Harry was in detention with Lockhart for four hours and then gets out late at night, conveniently bumps into his two friends, and then BAM! All the kids in the entire school happen upon the scene at that exact moment. Does McGonagall write backwards on the chalkboard to make learning even more of a challenge for her students? We will be transforming animals into water goblets. Ah, another super useful spell. That's something you probably need on an everyday basis. The air alone would be able to open the chamber and unleash the horror within, and by so doing, purge the school of all those who, in Slytherin's view, were unworthy to study magic. Like Filch's cat? Why would the school allow Ron to keep performing magic with this wand? It seems like it would be a danger to himself and everyone around him. And why doesn't a school full of magical items have, like, a spare wand lying around somewhere that this poor bastard can use? Let's go! Hermione, Ron, and Hagrid get from the stands to the field in seven seconds flat. Also, thank God Hermione is the only alert, responsible person in the whole school. No one ever comes in here. Why? Moaning Myrtle. How incredibly convenient for our heroes, and how terribly inconvenient for all the girls in the school to have their bathroom choices narrowed down. Wand goes flying, but then is magically back in Lockhart's hand after he lands. And we all know Lockhart doesn't know enough magic to pull that trick off. What's bad? If I hadn't told that snake not to attack Justin... Yes, there was absolutely no one who could have stopped that snake from attacking Justin. I mean, no one. 
You would have done well in Slytherin. You're wrong. I get the sense that Slytherin needs to rebrand itself. I mean, everything associated with Slytherin is evil. All the evil kids go here. If you're sent to Slytherin, the school's basically saying, you're a bad kid. Have fun being an asshole, head. The snake monster in the Chamber of Secrets must be waiting weeks between victims. We had the cat, then the picture kid, then the dark-haired dude, and it's Christmas. Isn't he on some kind of crusade to kill all the mudbloods? Man, it sure is lucky there's a time and place to catch Crab and Goyle walking alone in the hallways and trick them with floating cupcake bait. Cool. This super complicated potion that took a month to create apparently does not need to be measured or administered in any specific amount. Follow the spiders. Hagrid tells the kids to go into the dark forest, which he surely knows has a bunch of ravenous spiders waiting to kill them. And for what? Hagrid never opened the Chamber of Secrets. To clear his name? The defense calls to the stand? This giant spider! He'll clear it up. I believe in magic cars with invisibility buttons. I really do. But I don't believe in a magic car that somehow knows its owner is in danger and comes roaring in to save the day. Oh, come on! She's been in here for weeks, but not one doctor, nurse, or professor checked to see if there was a large, wadded-up piece of paper in her hand. But if it kills by looking people in the eye, why is it no one's dead? Because no one did look it in the eye. Colin saw it through his camera. Justin must have seen the basilisk through nearly head to snick. And Hermione had the mirror. And Mrs. Norris? There was water on the floor that night. This is the most convenient and luckiest set of circumstances ever for numerous characters to defy death. Spiders flee before it. This page about the basilisk clearly states that the crowing of the rooster can kill it. But instead of seeing that important information, Harry focuses on the spiders flee from it and ends up going into the Chamber of Secrets completely roosterless. Also, why were the spiders running out of Hagrid's cabin then? Where was the basilisk during that sh Who is it that the monster's taken, Minerva? Ginny Weasley. How does she know which student was taken? The message just says her without mentioning a name. Well, I must say, when I took the job... It's completely illogical that Dumbledore would ever have hired a bumbling, useless wizard like Lockhart to be any kind of teacher at Hogwarts. You wait here and try and shift some of this rock so we can get back through. Ron neither has the wand nor the arms to move substantial amounts of rock from this pile. How does a memory generated from a diary pick up Harry's wand? And if he can do that, why doesn't he do anything else to Harry that might have made killing him easier? So how did Fox the Phoenix get past the spot where the rocks caved in and block the path? What's more, what about that snake door that Harry had to speak partial tongue to open? The door clearly closes behind him. Main character trips and falls while running away from evil cliche. Ginny, you need to get yourself out. Follow the chamber and you'll find Ron. Trapped behind a wall of fallen rock that you can't get past. Stop there and wait for more instructions. You must have shown me real loyalty down in the chamber. Nothing but that could have called forks to you. Well, it's either that or the convenient storytelling. Why would Malfoy bring Dobby along on this angry visit to Dumbledore's office? So the rule is the house elf becomes free when the master presents him with clothes. Is this really presenting clothes to Dobby? Does Malfoy have to specify every time he gives Dobby a basket of laundry? Now these aren't your clothes, Dobby. These are for cleaning. This is all accidental and without the master's knowledge. This rule and this loophole are stupid. I know we want to have a nice Dobby saves Harry moment here at the end, but was Lucius Malfoy seriously about to use the death curse on Harry right here outside Dumbledore's office? All exams have been cancelled. You didn't learn anything anyway. Disney slow clap finale cliche. Goodbye, Dumbledore. Hope you don't look and sound completely different next time I see you. Okay, now let's take a look at how negligent this school is. After Filch's cat is petrified, Dumbledore says he strongly recommends caution. At this point, there should at least be some beefed up security and possibly some education about petrification. Now the school's Jimmy Olsen is petrified, Dumbledore now says, Our students are in great danger. Tell them Hogwarts is no longer safe. It is as we fear. The Chamber of Secrets has indeed been opened again. The answer? Let's teach students self-defense techniques, but not against some possible monster which might know something like, I don't know, petrification, but against each other and using this dumbass Lockhart, who by this time everyone knows is a fraud. And of course they learn nothing except that Harry can speak parcel tongue. The school forgets about that no longer safe decree. Nobody patrols the halls. Voldemort can apparently just guide Ginny Weasley around the school's halls, petrifying cats and wizards and painting messages in blood, and there isn't one person who ever witnesses it. Now it's business as usual again, and this kid Justin gets petrified. Dumbledore knows it's not Potter. Now there's been three incidents, but there's still no evacuation of the school and still no extra security. The Gryffindor house is ransacked, and who does Neville go to? Well, he goes to Harry, because not one adult here seems to give a f about anything. I mean, these assholes were about to play Quidditch again. And there's a monster crawling around in the school, but it gets canceled, because Hermione is now petrified. So now a cat and three people have been petrified, and the school remains open. And not one kid is scared of shit in this entire school. And they're casually sitting around in their dorms without a care in the world. Then there's this ludicrous new set of rules that come out. Be back at your house by six. Okay, whatever. But every student will be accompanied by a teacher to every lesson? Sorry, no way that happens. Did you see how many teachers are at this school? 
No? Well, McGonagall makes an announcement that the students need to go back to their dorms and all the teachers come up to the second floor corridor where they can see the new message. Do you see how many people show up? It's six, including a dwarf. And this asshole Filch. We find out Jenny Weasley's been taken by the monster and only now does McGonagall say, Students must be sent home. I'm afraid this is the end of Hogwarts. But they forget about all that once Lockhart shows up, telling him he finally has a chance to slay the beast, knowing full well he doesn't have the ability. Is an evacuation ordered? Of course not. Can you answer my fan mail? Not really. Accustomed to seeing a flying car. Uh, right. 